five, four, three, two, one, go. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. So we're actually going to start by talking about the Cray Twins, yeah. who you knew. So yes, I did. How did you first meet them? I met them in a discotheque. They came in there and everybody went so quiet. <laughs> and they had a, a disco, a sort of bar disco in Knightsbridge in a cellar. And I remember going down there and seeing them. Once I was at a dinner with Barbara Windsor and she knew them and they were in the same restaurant. So I met him about three or, three or four times, but I, tr I tried very heartily not to become a close friend because <laughs> they, they were scary, they were scary. The mood changes as the twins walk in. They loom larger than any of the colorful characters frequenting the hideaway, cooler than any of the celebrities at the bar, and with more fans, they're the true stars of this show. What sort of people would be around them most of the time? People who didn't want to die. <laughs> right. So you had to, you had to not relax fully. On no, it, they weren't a relaxing couple to be with. Quite honestly, I, and, and I grew up in in, uh, in the Elephant and Castle. There was an Elephant and Castle gang, which was as fierce as them, and I knew them very well. So I thought. I know enough gangsters, I don't really, I, I just want to be an actor, you know, and, and be quite simple and, and, and quiet, and, and I'm not going to hit anybody or slash anybody with a razor. You've been in gang films, and most notably, probably Get Carter. So how did you prepare for a role like that? I knew a guy at the Elephant and Castle, and he was that. He was a killer. I mean, I, I mean, I never said that to him, but I just knew who he was, and he knew I knew who he was. And I based it on him. And then when I, I saw him one that night in a disco, and he said to me, I've just seen that film of yours, Ged Carter. I said, oh, really? what do you think? He said, load of crap. Biggest load of crap I've ever seen. I said, oh, really? I said, yeah. He said, one thing. He said, why aren't you married? He said, you aren't married. He said, we're all married. Why do you think we do these things? We have a family. What were you doing these things for? And he gave me a bollocking. <laughs> and I never argued with him. <laughs> I didn't want to get assassinated the next day. Did he know that, you'd, that he'd inspired your character? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, he knew that. Yeah. Did that feel like fair game? Or did it feel like you had to sort of tread carefully about what you put in films? Oh no, well, you, can, you can say what you like in films because they, they, they love it. They love the fact that you're making a film about them. And when you think about the gangs that you portrayed in films and the ones that you knew in your real life, how, what were the biggest differences? It's according to what, were they bosses? Were they ordinary gangsters? Were they assassins? Three very types, different types of people and I played all three. And they have a completely different personality. The ordinary gangster never stops talking, you know, and the, the assassin never says anything, and the gang boss speaks a lot, and when he does, you better bloody listen. <laughs> Do you think they have a different sense of morality? Like, did Jack Carter just have a different sense of what was moral? Oh, absolutely. They are so powerful that they are right, and you are wrong. That's what it is about that. Those morals give you a lot to play with in, in acting a part like that. Oh, yeah, it was wonderful for me. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I knew my man, I knew how to do it, you know. 